Okay, well, it's 2.01, so just to make good use of our time, why don't I get started? And I'll say, I'm, I'm Sarah Billy. Welcome, very, very big welcome to the first meet and greet for the newly admitted students for the class of 2022. Um, we're so excited to have you um, in our community, and we really hope that we can answer your questions here today and also that we'll get to meet you in person. Um, we've brought together a team of people to talk to you that includes some current students, which is always important, the, some of the people from the admissions committee, some of the people from the advising office, which is a critical essential link for everybody who may eventually come here. Um, John Palmieri is the department chair and he's here on the call today. And Max Lieblick, who is the chair of the graduate program right now. So it's a big team and um, hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions that come up, but why don't you jot them down and they will, the plan here is, um, here's how I wanted to choreograph this. I want to um, just get, do a short slide presentation with some pictures to tell you a little bit about our department, get the conversation started. Then I wanna introduce some of the people who are here on the call who you might wanna meet. And then I wanna open it up to questions from students. Does that sound okay, everyone? All right. So here we go, I'll try to do screen share and we'll walk through this brief presentation. Okay, so I wanna talk about the University of Washington. Um, we have a wonderful math department. It's big, it's vibrant, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of opportunities. And we're gonna um, just give you the brief overview right here. I included the names of the people who I'm expecting on the call so that we can call them out by name and you can refer back to them too. I'm gonna to send you a copy of this slide presentation. So, um, the U Depart UW Math Department is pretty big, actually. We have about 60 faculty members when you include all the different various ranks of, of people who are teaching here. Uh, 85 PhD students, approximately. Uh, we have a huge undergraduate population. I've put a thousand undergrad math majors here. That's a bit of an exaggeration. I think it's closer to 700, but you know, it fluctuates and, uh, because depending on who's graduating, who's coming in, who's not quite yet a major and who's in calculus and, and so on. But it's a big group. It's a really big group. It didn't near, used to be so big. Um, 20 years ago, it was like 250. But we have had an explosion of people wanting to be math majors lately. And um, that's pretty exciting. It reflects well on our department, I think that so many people want to go into the degree. And as you can see on Zoom there, <laughs> you've probably seen this everywhere on Zoom, lots of pets around too these days, cats, dogs, and so on. Actually, one person brought his wallaby to a meeting that I was on. So um, we have one of the big reasons you might want to come to the University of Washington is just the wide variety of different topics that people study. One of the things that makes me very happy is you never know in research what you're going to bump into, you know, what kind of expertise you might need. Uh, you might have to learn some new mathematics and it's pretty easy for me to walk down the hallway and find somebody to help me out when I'm stuck on a problem. And that's a great thing. So what do we cover? We cover a lot of algebra, non commutative algebra. Um, algebraic geometry is huge here. Algebraic combinatorics is huge. Uh, we also do geometric combinatorics, uh, complex analysis, discrete geometry, differential geometry, dynamical systems, ergodic theory, mathematical physics, non-smooth analysis, number theory, numerical analysis, optimization is big, PDEs is big, inverse problems, probability and representation theory. So hopefully that covers some of the things that you're interested in. And um, maybe I should have put on here some theoretical computer science too. That's definitely something that we have expertise in and we have a lot of close associates to the computer science department these days. Sarah, may I point out that uh, topology is also something that we have in our department? Yeah, that's a great point. I got to add that to our list. Um, so I don't think we higher than the geometric measure theory is something that we do in this department. Yes, geometric measure theory is definitely something. And I, okay, so I should have run this past the faculty, first of all, make sure everything is covered. Um, and we did just hire Danny Shee in algebraic topology, and we are about to have a hiring meeting right after this. So we're hopefully going to be doing a little more hiring coming up soon. So stay tuned on new faculty. Okay, so what are the highlights of our PhD program that sort of sets us apart? 
Uh, one thing that I'm very proud of is our research environment. So it's active, it's engaged. Uh, we have a lot of seminars, colloquia, normal times, not COVID times. We have a lot of international visitors coming through that gives you a chance to meet people, not just in your own department, but then, you know, you know, you, you end up with a network of researchers, mathematicians who you know. Um, the colloquium in particular has been really a nice thing in the last few years. When Jayadev Athreya took over as the colloquium chair, he really broadened it out to be a lot more interesting, a lot more accessible, and a, a lot of people go to the colloquium. It's not just a highly focused little research area. It's um, it, it's pretty vibrant, and that's that's a nice thing. I'm looking forward to that resuming non-COVID times, sort of some of those broad audience talks. Um, almost all of our PhD students are supported through teaching assistantships. So that was a question on the admissions application right at the top. Are you interested in funding? Uh, no surprise, almost everybody is um, interested in getting some funding. So um, some do, people do come with fellowships. Some people occasionally do pay their own way, but um, it's really something that is part of, integrated into the department that we expect you to be a, uh, a TA at some point in your career. We do offer five years of funding. So um, that's pretty good for, most people are getting close to the end of their PhD in five years. And then we often, almost always offer a six year of funding for people who need it. It's not something that's gonna be written in your letter because it's not guaranteed. It depends on how you're doing and making progress and so on and how much money we have. We, you know, we do have funding limitations, but uh, so far in my experience, everybody who needed a sixth year was able to get it. And occasionally, actually a seventh year, there was one situation I know where there was a health situation. Somebody needed a seventh year and they were able to get it. Um, TAs here do get extensive TA training, especially when you first come. We, we ask you to come in advance so that you don't just go cold into the classroom and say, hi, my name, you know, my name is X and this is the first day I've ever taught anything and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, for the majority of you, actually, I know you already have a lot of teaching experience. I was really impressed with the applicant pool and how much teaching experience people already have. So I think this is going to be just gravy on top for you guys, um, the teaching experience that you have. Maybe just think of that as time to collaborate on your teaching. Um, we, we, in fact, want to like look carefully at our TA handbook this year and make sure that's up to snuff, too, and maybe you can help us with that some. Um, you will have the opportunity to act as a TA in the sense that there will be a lead instructor to begin with and you will be um, teaching sections of students in smaller groups, like around 30 students each. But at some point, if you're really interested in teaching, you can request to teach your own class and be the lead instructor as well. That's something that we offer, especially in the summertime. This is something students often do. And a lot of people like it. A lot of people like being in charge and um, making the executive decisions about how to present the material. It's a good opportunity. Um, another key part of our department is we really do encourage collaboration. Um, we like to think that our graduate program is set up so that there's no competition so much as you're encouraged to work with each other. Uh, you know, in practice, does that come through? Um, sure, there are some people out there competing and that's human nature, but we like to think that we set up the program in a way that it's not butting you against each other. We, we want you all to succeed, and I think of it as the competition is out there outside of the department walls, inside. We were working together as a family. Um, and one more thing to keep in mind, the last bullet point on this slide, is that to us graduate student voices matter. We, in many ways, um, this week we just had a meeting with the first year students and we listened, the whole graduate committee met with the first year students and we listened to what their concerns are. And we have taken back some suggestions we'll be discussing it on Monday about how to incorporate their ideas going forward. Another way that graduate student voices matter is that every year the faculty propose different classes that we have a lot of flexibility in what we teach. We want to teach things at the cutting edge of research, so we don't just leave the course catalog alone every year. Every year the faculty propose new classes that they want to teach, and then they, the students vote on what classes do they want to get funded, and that's what, that's what goes into the, the year's special topics courses. So if you don't get enough votes, uh, your class won't run. So it's kind of, I like that actually. I think it's a nice system. It's a nice way for the students to have input. Not to mention, you know, of course, you can always ask for a particular class to be taught. 
but then you got to get somebody to agree to teach it. So what's on the list for this year is uh, a whole bunch of good courses. Um, we teach every couple of years, we, every two years, we teach a whole long year-long sequence in combinatorics. So numerative combinatorics, algebraic combinatorics, and the geometric version. Algebraic topology is being taught now, Gaussian free fields, Archimedean geometry, geometry of the flag variety, optimal transport has been huge lately. I don't know if you're following that revolution. Uh, measure theory, scheme theory, is non-Archimedean geometry on there twice. Oh, I see multiple quarters of that. Um, algebraic groups, self-organized criticality, uh, uh, graduate level linear algebra, complex manifolds, semi-classical analysis, convex algebraic geometry, non-commutative algebra, model theory, and so on. And this is in addition to our core courses in things that you would expect, like real analysis, complex analysis, algebra, and so on. So these are just the special topics. Uh, one thing that's probably... So, Sarah, yeah, Sarah, Sarah. Uh, that measure theory is a course is not really a spe special topics course. I don't, that, that has something to do with uh, the way we've been reorganizing programs, but measure theory is a course that we offer every year. I just okay, great. It was listed as a five eighty one. Actually, I see I have common torques <clears throat> here too, but that's also offered every every other year regularly. So this list is a little bit of a mishmash, but these are things that you can expect to see a mishmash like this every year of of topics, right? But it's good to know the measure theory is a regular. Okay. A regularly offered course. Awesome. And um, what what do you care? What's the bottom line for you? I suspect it has something to do with you're coming to graduate school in hopes of finishing the PhD and not just getting started, right? So one of the things I'm most proud of of our department right now is that our attrition rate is very low. It's much lower than the national average, which I just saw an article about a year ago in um, the notices of the AMS, which says across the country of the United States, uh, the attrition rate is about 50% for math math mathematical PhDs. It's pretty high. And here in our department, 80% of the people who started about 10 years ago, you know, it's hard to count the attrition because people graduate in different amounts of time, but roughly in that window, we've had 80% success rate. There are people who are leaving for good reason. Sometimes, you know, uh, getting a math PhD is a very long haul. I think of it as lots more than a marathon. And it is never going to be the case that it's going to be perfect for everyone. So people decide they want to go off into industry. People decide that they'd rather go teach in community college. There are a lot of reasons, good reasons, that people do leave the program. We will never have a 100% completion rate. But I think 80% is pretty good. And, of course, we're always working on making sure that everybody who wants to finish can finish. Uh, it's very important to us. I'm sure it's very important to you. And then what happens is not just getting the PhD and you're done, right? That's not the end of your life. You probably plan to work as a mathematician someday. And our students are going on to get great jobs in industry and in academia in various prestigious places. Uh, Seattle's a nice place to go to graduate school because we do have a lot of industry in the area and you'll get to meet some of those people in industry as you pass through. And also, you know, of course, we're, we feel like we're, we try to stay well connected with the other departments. That's part, other departments in other universities and other countries and so on. That's part of our having visitors from around the world come to stay with us and also having people come and speak in our seminars and colloquia. We want you to meet people outside of the University of Washington. Um, one more thing that a lot of students are taking advantage of these days is our advanced data science option. It's a list of a few extra courses and a seminar that you have to take if you want a certificate that says that you've studied some data science. And this is a great thing on your resume if you decide you want to go into industry. And, you know, just for everybody, no matter what you're doing these days, knowing a little bit of data science is really important. Uh, it, the, there's a real revolution going on even inside of pure math these days about using big data too. And one of the things that I'm interested in is, um, is making sure that we have opportunities for students to learn about computation in pure mathematics. So among the graduate committee, we've been talking about how we're going to foster this. We have designed, we're working with one of our graduate students who used to work at Facebook. He's going to teach a new class this summer, Intro to Python. But with the idea that that's building into something that might become a more regular seminar or colloquia, where we invite people to come and talk to us about their computational-related research in pure mathematics and 
and how it touches into industry and how people in industry are using the kind of pure math that you're learning about. So I'm really excited about that direction. Okay, so um, a big feature of the University of Washington is we are situated on an absolutely stunning piece of land. It's surrounded by water on sort of three sides. So I put the map there so you can see we have Portage Bay a little bit to the southwest. Um, Lake Union is to our east. And then beyond them, we have two mountain ranges, the Olympic Mountains and the Cascade Mountains. And Mount Rainier is one of the tallest mountains in the United States. It's 14,410 feet tall. Some people do try to climb it, but it's a serious adventure and you, you don't go alone, you go with a guide. Um, but a lot of people take advantage of the smaller mountains around to go hiking and just every day there's a beautiful view. Um, the, the campus itself is quite stunning, uh, rolling hills and a lot of flowers, beautiful plant work and stuff. So it's a nice setting for a university. And um, if you do get to visit this spring, take, make sure to look around for the cherry blossoms that'll be blooming very soon. Uh, there's tons of good pictures on the web of the university too. So if you, if you don't think that these two are enough, I encourage you to take a look at some others. I have some links for you. But it's a, it's a nice location. It's also another thing that I like is we are, the light rail has two stops on campus now. And the light rail can take you downtown or to Capitol Hill or to the airport or up north. It's nice because it's connected a corridor of places where people live and get apartments, neighborhoods that um, used to you took a bus to campus and now you can take a light rail. And uh, a lot of people use that as their way to get into school. Um, if you do come to the University of Washington, I want you to know that uh, there are a lot of different kinds of resources. If you're here for five or six or seven years, you know, life happens sometimes, and there are resources for you if you ever needed some help. This is true on a lot of college campuses, but I just put some links there in case you're interested in any of these things. Um, you know, mental health is important. LGBTQ, LGBTQ um, issues are important. We have a Q Center on campus. We do have a lot of graduate student services. Um, equity inclusion is important in the University of Washington. and. Um, so that's a good one. And certainly race is something that people need to find their people. If it's inside the math department, that's great. And if you need to go beyond, there are ways to do that. So we want everybody to feel included and find people where they will feel comfortable as they're going through their math PhD program. So those are some links to get started. Um, I, I do, I'm mean, quite proud that the University of Washington is very environmentally friendly, in case you didn't know. Garbage comes in three flavors here. We have the regular old garbage, we have recycling, and everywhere you go there's a compost bin. So you can put your composting in there. Um, most people don't drive to work. Uh, this is some statistics from the UW Transportation Serv Services that 34%, sorry, 39% take um, public transit, 28% walk, 8% bike, 5% use carpool. Um, it says here that 18% drive to campus, but actually in the math department, I think it's a lot lower than that. I actually was looking around for anybody who has a parking per permit these days to tell me how much money it costs and I could not find anybody. Um, we have a lot of bike paths in the area and the Burke Gilman path goes right by the university. It's 17 miles long. A lot of people bike to work or use that as a place to jog or walk. And um, there's a lot, there's a whole U University of Washington Department of Sustainability if you're interested. And um, in terms of recruiting, uh, in addition to this, we are planning a couple of other things for you too. Um, Christine Hampton and Zenqing Men are students who are here on the call and they are um, working with me to uh, figure out what's next. So we're going to have a couple of um, student only panels and if you are able to come visit, if you're interested in coming for a visit, I do recommend that you wait for a couple of weeks because um, tomorrow is the last day of our winter quarter and then we'll have um, the exam period and then spring break. So we'll really be back in session at the beginning of April, so that's the best time to come. So if you could target a visit around April 1st, that would be great. We do have some funding available for people who want to visit, and I have to um, let you know about the details of that. But my plan right now is to offer sort of $500, up to $500 for transportation costs if you do want to come visit. 
And I know that might not be quite enough depending on where you're coming from, so we'll, we'll work it out. But I, if you want to come, we want to make it accessible. If you don't want to come, because I understand travel has gotten a mo much more complicated than it used to be, hopefully we'll have enough for you online too. Um, I'm working on a resources page where all the dates and um, links to things will be at least kept free in one place, because I know if you're probably applying here, you're probably applying some other places as well, and considering your different options, it does get a little confusing keeping track of all the information coming at you. So I want to have one central resource for you. Um, we have a visitor information page if you do come. Uh, Jack Lee has compiled a list of, I don't know, 45 different interesting things you might want to do in Seattle. You can take a look at that list if you come. Maybe you can take advantage of them. I've been taking photos of things around the university. Um, I, I hate to succumb to the U.S. News and World Reports because I'm not fond of the, their whole modeling and I don't let this drive me in my decision making, but I can use it to brag about a little bit. So did you know that the state of Washington last year was number one among states in the U.S. News and World Reports? So I'm very proud of that. And this year we even moved up a step in the global universities and we are now number seven. So that's also quite impressive, yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, we are not in the top seven. If you look at the universities among the United States, we're only in the top seven among global universities. I don't know why that could possibly be true, but you can at least tell your parents about that and they'll be proud. Okay, so people I want to introduce you to, Alice Boyds, Sylvia Ganassi, Chris Hoffman, Christine Hampton, Neil Koblitz, Zhang Ching Men, John Palmieri, Steve, uh, Stefan Steinerbrenner, and Max Lieblick. And I will send you this, and when you get this, I hope you will put together this platonic solid, branded, especially for you, by the University of Washington. Okay, that's coming at you. Okay, I will quit this now, and let's start introducing some of our people. Okay. So first of all, Zhen Qingmeng, did she have to go? She had to leave first. She had to teach at 2.30, so I'm afraid she's already off the call. Okay, so let me move on. Alice, would you um, unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Alice Boyds. I'm the person in the advising office. I'm the program assistant. I've been at the university since 2016, and it's a wonderful place to work. The, the people here are friendly. The faculty is delightful. The students are warm and welcoming, and it's, it's been a great place to work. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And I must say, Alice does a wonderful job. So if you need anything, she is the smiling face that you meet when you first go into the advising office. Yeah, John says, yay, Alice, on the chat, which is so true. Okay, uh, Sylvia, will you introduce yourself? Sylvia is one of the very wonderful members of our admissions committee. Hi, hey, my name is Sylvia, and I'm a postdoc here. I arrived here in August 2020, and I work in generic measure theory. <laughs> Uh, and my mentor is Tatiana Taro. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to see more humans in the flesh uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the next year. So I hope to see you in the flesh as well. Awesome, thank you. And Chris, you're next up. Hi, I'm Chris Hoffman. Uh, I'm a professor in the math department and just so one thing Sarah was saying was about the setting of the University of Washington and it's a beautiful campus, but also there are a lot of really nice parks right around. I'm right now in Ravenna Park, which is about a mile north of campus and it's a really stunning urban park. So there are a lot of good things about the math department and in addition, there are a lot of really nice things about the city of Seattle as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Actually, do you want to take your camera and just swirl around the park there and show us what what it looks like in during so, peak moss season? So I'm kind of I'm on a pedestrian a little pedestrian only bridge. There are three of them in this park, and there's a stream, uh, all going through uh, the, the ravine, which is yeah really really close to campus. It's easy to come up here um, and escape from the city. So. It's, it's really nice to be able to be, to walk from campus 15 minutes and be 
in the U District in a vibrant urban area and also be able to walk 15 minutes in a different direction and to be uh, in a, a very, very different environment and more natural environment. Thanks, Chris. I, I must say that's exactly right. The urban forests of Seattle are just wonderful. That's great. Chris represents our probability group, which is a big, very vibrant group, too. They have a wonderful seminar. It meets on Mondays. Okay, Christine Hampton, um, are you on the call? Yes, You're next up. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm Christine. I'm a graduate student in algebraic geometry, and I'm going to help coordinate you all doing things and meeting with other graduate students. And so I would love to talk to you all, maybe in a setting where there are not faculty members around and you might have questions that you want to ask with people lower on the totem pole. So I'm going to put my email in the chat. You can all email me whenever and you will be hearing from me very soon about all sorts of things. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. OK, uh, Neil, you're up next. Hi, my name is Neil Koblitz. My field of research is number theory. And in recent years, it's been an application to cryptography and data security issues, computer security. Um, I uh, collaborate a lot with uh, internationally with people um, in India, Vietnam, Mexico, and elsewhere. Um, and uh, I have other interests outside of uh, math, such as my wife and I own some forests and we're very interested in environmental issues. And we also uh, have a, a, a very small foundation that uh, purpose is to encourage women in math and science in developing. Um, so, uh, but in math, it, it, it's mainly number theory and photography where, where I've been working for a long time. And I look forward to seeing you all in person. It's, it's really uh, nice that we're finally uh, getting into totally in person, the totally in person teaching and uh, things are livening up again around the department. For a while, it, the department was like a ghost town during the pandemic. And, and I think you, you, you miss, uh, when that happens, you really appreciate how, how much better it is when, when it's really uh, more of a community the way it, it's becoming as the pandemic ends. Wonderful. Yes. Thanks, Neil. And thanks for your contributions on the admissions committee, too. Okay, next up is John Palmieri, who is the chair of our department. Hi, yeah, my name is John Palmieri. Um, I've been in the department since 1999. I was, I'm trained as an algebraic topologist. Um, I've also done a lot of work on SAGE, the mathematical software. So um, if you ever use anything in SAGE and you browse through the source code, you may see my name in various random spots. Um, uh, but yeah, well, welcome to everyone. It, it was Sarah shared with me the list of all the admitted students. It was very exciting to see such a strong group. So I hope I hope you all come. It's a great place. Awesome. Thanks, John. And just in case you on the call don't know, John also wrote the ultra LaTeX package for Emacs, which I use on a daily basis. So I'm very grateful for that too. Uh, Stefan, you're up next. Hello, I'm. Uh... Stefan Steinerberger, I work in analysis, so partial differential equations, harmonic analysis, spectral theory. So if, if there's an integral sign problem interested. And I can sort of mirror what has been said, which is it's a very large department. There's a lot of activity. In fact, there's tons of people I'm overdue to speak to about various things. Uh, really a remarkable amount of activity. You can do sort of any sorts of math you want. And I'll finish by listing things I can see from my office. An absolutely gorgeous mountain range with uh, sunrises right behind that mountain range, a fantastic lake, and a volcano. It's a really gorgeous place. Great. Thanks, Stefan. So Stefan's right. You can see sunrise from your office because it does happen quite late in December. <laughs> so it's not that he's at work at 530 in the morning. Your sun does rise close to 8 a.m. in the winter mornings. 
actually I'm in at six sometimes oh, okay. when it's, okay. when it's really should. exciting because you know sometimes you're close to finishing the proof and then you can't wait <laughs> that's awesome okay Max you're up next hi I'm Max Lieblick I'm a professor in the department and I'm also currently the graduate program coordinator uh, I've been here since 2009 and um, I love it it's great it's, uh, you know, you've heard all the great things about Seattle and it, it's freakishly amazing. It, it is freakishly amazing. I don't know what else to say. Uh, I used to live in other places and Seattle's a nice combination of beautiful and highly functional. And the same is true of the university. Um, you know, public higher education is a complicated place anywhere in the country. And here, I think we do it as well as anybody could. So it, it's just a great, it's great. Love it. You're going to love it too. Okay, well said, thank you. Okay, that's the end of the introductions of people um, who are here in Seattle right now. And I wanna turn it over to questions. Now, what's the best way to do this? Um, it might be good if we use the hand raising function and I'll call on you uh, if there are questions. And if not, we can go around and uh, sort of one by one ask you some some questions. Okay, great. Ian, do you want to go first with a question? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not you want sure to introduce this, yourself uh, too? Oh yeah. Hi, I'm Ian. Um, I'm a current student at Stanford and yeah, prospective grad student. Um, I guess my question is, could you talk a little bit about what the quals process is like at the University of Washington? Max, do you want to take that question, or should we have a student take it? Um, I could describe the steps. So, as it is currently construed, we have um, a we have exams called the prelims, preliminary exams, and we've we've divided mathematics the foundations into three basic areas: analysis, algebra, and geometry, topology, manifolds. The sort of and uh, you're expected to pass two out of three exams. That's sort of the, the default setting. You can pass them by passing them before you enter. You can, uh, there's a core course that goes with each of those subjects. You can do well enough in the core course to count it as passing the exam. You could pass the exam at the beginning of your second year, or uh, if that doesn't go well at the end of your second year. And there are other mechanisms that we use on an ad hoc basis to deal with um, students who are doing really well, but maybe just suck at taking exams. So we're, we're highly sensitive to the many paths you could take through um, through the program. And we try very hard to uh, respect people's talents and to help people uh, go where they wanna go. And then later we have a general exam. Uh, in, some in some departments, that's sort of the kind of thing you do to like become a candidate. You know, uh, for us, it's sort of like a test of, uh, your subject knowledge in a in a when you started to specialize there's also some flexibility around how that works that happens a few years later it's not an especially onerous process but one thing that you should know is that uh you know any departmental structure anything made of people is like a living entity and so we're always thinking about what is the best way to do things and adjusting as we go as our students change and as our faculty change that's awesome. Yeah. Christine, do you want to say anything about exams, prelim exams? Well, I took prelims four or five years ago now, and I think they've changed a little bit since I was in there. But from what I remember, they were they were all day exams, but there's a lot of support leading up to taking the exam, not only from your cohort, but from people doing prep classes and a real everyone can do it together attitude. It was the most stressful summer preparing for my manifolds prelim and also probably one of the most fun. And I don't particularly care for manifolds. So that says a lot about how nice the group was. Yeah, that's wonderful. So that's an important part of it though. Um, we, we offer the exams in September. So you could come in advance and take the exams if you've already had a graduate course in one of the three topics where we offer them. There's no harm done if you take it and don't pass. Don't be offended or anything. The only thing is that we're expecting you to be able to perform you know, at the professional level. So if you don't pass, that means it's 
it's worth spending some more time on that topic, digging in and really understanding it extremely well so that you're well prepared for the next steps. And if you pass it, great, opens up doors to the next things that you can do. So both of those are good options. Um, the prelim prep classes are something that the department actually pays a, a faculty member or sometimes a senior graduate student to run. You would meet once a week, you would go through old exams, get feedback, you even practice sitting um, for four hours straight, work, you know, making sure your hands or muscles are strong enough to make it through. The exams are hard, in my opinion, and they're hard for a reason. We want you to leave here with strong skills, and we have to help you develop those skills, and we have to verify that you have them so that we can help you just, just help you make sure you get to where you want to go. So that's, that's a good question about exams. Anything else? Questions? Yep, Caleb. Hi, um, my name is Caleb. Um, I'm at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Um, and I had a question about something you mentioned earlier about interactions with other departments. So I was wondering, say, to what extent does this happen? Say, could I take classes in CS, maybe be jointly advised by someone in CS, that sort of thing? Yeah, um, so we have, um, Thomas Rothfoss is definitely appointed in both departments, uh, math and computer science. A number of the faculty go to computer science seminars and the computer seminar, computer, like the theoretical computer scientists, they come to our common torque seminar regularly. Um, uh, there's there's a good amount of overlap. There's not just with CS, but also actually, interestingly, we have good connections with Aero Astro, of course, with applied math. Statistics is in the same building with us, so that makes it easier to talk to them sometimes. Unfortunately, applied math is actually in a different building, which I find um, a hindrance for getting together with them, even though I actually like those the members of the department quite a bit. Um, so. I wish it was more. I wish we were all housed in the same building. But if you have the initiative, I think that's definitely something that you can take on. Um, depending on which kind of math that you do, you'll have more or less interaction with different departments. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can give a one a, a complimentary example to what Sarah is talking about. Because I have um, I have students who who work on some problems in say, in computer vision because there's you know beautiful algebraic geometry associated to that and we regularly have interactions, you know, with Reka Thomas, who's an optimization. She has a bunch of students who do work in, in this direction. And somebody that we love talking to, who's a co-advisor to many of these students, who's uh, who's at Google, Samir Agarwal. So I think, you know, the nexus that Sarah was mentioning before between industry, actually also government and academia here provides all sorts of interesting arrangements that go beyond just, can you work with people in other departments? You can actually kind of you can work in a whole you know, milieu of all sorts of intellectual activity that's not just sort of university focused. Yeah, that's a great point. And we do have some affiliate faculty who are at different places around the city. And um, it's nice also, not just in computer science, but connections to the uh, Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, to the Pacific Northwest National Labs, which is a government organization. So we, we try to stay connected the best we can. Mm -hmm. Andrew, is that a hand? Un unmute. Oh, Andrew, hold on. You're still muted. I'm not hearing you. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay. introduce yourself, please. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm Andrew. I'm from uh, Cal Poly Pomona in Southern California. Uh, I was just uh, wondering, in regard to the uh, research done in representation theory, do you think it's more like number theoretic, combinatorial, or is it more like algeb algebraic geometry, or maybe like analysis? Like, uh, how would you say the the research in the department is? In number theory. So, in representation theory, how does it connect to other topics? Well, yeah, there's like a lot of other connections, but where do you see the uh, the department's research more focused in? Okay, so if you're talking about somebody like Yulia Pepsova, she does a lot of homological algebra. Um, Monty McGovern does a more classical kind of representation theory. I do a lot of stuff that is connected to the representation theory of the symmetric group, and so does Ricky Liu. Um, 
uh, yeah, so it, dep- it kind of depends. I don't know if you've looked into James Yang's work. Uh, James does a lot of beautiful non-commutative algebraic geometry that has close connections to that topic too. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's always in flux a little bit, but hopefully those are enough names that, and I think I have them listed next to your names of people I think that you should be interested in looking at. Actually, you know, in case anybody's interested, I, ha- I have on, on my application spreadsheet four or five names for each of you. And a lot of times you mentioned, you told me who you were interested in. But if, if I felt like there was extra people, I, I have them there in mind for you to talk to too. I can tell you who they are as individuals. Maybe I can add, we don't have like geometric Langlands or, you know, automorphic representations of that kind, but that stuff we don't at the moment have as an active group inside the department. Mm-hmm. And then Sharon, I thought you had your hand up too, but now it went away. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so my name is Sharon and I'm at the University of Connecticut. I just wanted to ask about some of the outreach opportunities that you have at UW and kind of the ways that grad students can be involved in that. Oh, great. Then Christine is the right person for you. We have so many. Right? At the very least, we did before everything was remote. And now I'm not sure the standing of each program. But for a long time, we had for outside of the department, math teacher circles, math circles for elementary school, math circles for middle school, math circles for a mix. We had SIMU, which I don't know if it's technically affiliated with the department, but a summer program for high schoolers in math. There is within the school, uh, the Washington Directed Reading Program where you can work with undergraduates. There is WXML, where you can work as a mentor with undergraduates. There is, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Some people teach in prisons. There, yes. People would go and teach in prisons because there's a women's prison not too far. Uh, Somehow, oddly enough, the men I know who've taught in prisons teach at the women's prison, and the women I know have gone to some men's prison. I don't know if that is like a requirement, but it did strike me as sort of a surprise. Those are all the ones I can think of off the top of my head. That's great. I do a That's lot a of math idea. circles, if you ever want to talk about math circles. <laughs> also, I think we have a, um, an attitude in our department that we really embrace outreach. And so if you have a good idea and you would like to see something happen, you can declare a brown bag lunch or something and people will come and talk about it with you and maybe join you on your efforts so um about 10 years ago we used to have a bigger grant which actually supported that financially and i thought that was so great because everybody who wanted a ra quarter on the bigger grant had to also propose something that they're gonna do and i would love to get back to something like that because it just kind of put the seed of creativity in people's mind that you can change the world oh thanks carlos yeah So hopefully you'll be able to be a part of that, Sharon. Yeah. And I must say, this is something in our application process. When we were reviewing applications, we care about your community building experiences. And so the incoming class will also be interested in that. And certainly our current students are all quite community minded and and generous with their time. I hope I hope not too generous because of course you have to get through the PhD program. I worry sometimes when I'm reading these applications, you guys have done so much you know, and um, sometimes you have to focus in when you're getting your PhD. It's a balance between being generous and being focused. You can do more for the world if you get through this program. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? If not, I'm gonna start calling on people to introduce yourselves. Is that the next step? Okay, Ting, do you wanna introduce yourself? You're next up on my screen. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, hi, I'm Ting. Um, well, I'm currently um, at Cambridge, UK, um, and uh, I did my undergraduate at Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> yep, so uh, I, well, I enjoy doing algebraic geometry and number theory. Um, and well, besides math, um, I play the violin and I play the piano. Um, so I'm a music lover. Um, yeah. 
That is awesome. And we normally have an annual music recital, so we're going to sign you up. Ting just accepted, so anybody else who is, as you accept, we will put you in contact with each other. So definitely we're we'll, we'll, looking forward to our next music recital. Lorenzo, do you want to take the floor? Yes. I'm Lorenzo. I'm from Rome. I'm half Dutch. I, I was born in Rotterdam. And we'll ask for math, I like also algebraic geometry. And, but I also have a weak spot for probability, which doesn't quite, I don't know, but <laughs> I'd like to do something that couples them, maybe through combinatorics or something. That's something that, yeah, that I'm lately interested in, in the, yeah, those areas. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And Grace, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, um, I'm Grace. I'm currently finishing up my time at Yale. Um, my, my brother is actually at University of Washington and he oh. loves Seattle and all that too. Um, and let's see, interests are vaguely anything in theoretical computer science slash algorithms, um, specifically kind of as it relates to geometry and physics. Um, and non-academic thing, I'm weirdly into origami. So if anyone knows anything about origami clubs on campus, or if that is a thing that other people on campus are into, that's always a question I have. Can I just interject here? I'm sorry. One, one thing that's good to know about Seattle is there's a tremendous Japanese influence here, unlike many cities in the United States. There's a vibrant Japanese community all around the area. So this is one of the few places where you will find many people who are extremely good at origami. That's, That's absolutely true. I went to a wonderful origami conference once. It was three days long, and I don't think they went home at night from the conference. I think they actually stayed and folded all night long. It was crazy. <laughs> OK, great. So, Ham, do you want to go next? Yeah. Hi. So, I'm Soham from India. I'm currently completing my undergraduate at the Indian Statistical Institute, Bangalore. And uh, my math interests are also in algebraic geometry and the right fields like number theory, representation theory. And my non-math interests include, like I lo love listening to music and watch a lot of sports and participate sometimes too. Yeah, that's That's great, that's great. Thanks for staying up this late to participate too. Uh, Alice? Could you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Ellis. I use they, them pronouns. I go to Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania. Um, I like... You see John clapping for that? Oh, sweet. sweet. Um, I like, oh yeah, combinatorics, algebra, algebraic geometry, that kind of stuff. Um, Non-math. I like birding, bird watching. I like that a lot. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, thanks. Um, Ellis, will you be taking the topology honors exam in the spring? I will not, but are you the... I am. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm going right. to have to ask about that. Does that mean you have to... In Swarthmore, do you have an outside person give that exam or something? Huh. Neat. Okay, great. Uh, Joey, you're up. I am Joey. I'm a current senior at Purdue University. Um, I'm interested in probability, optimization, theoretical computer science, those areas of math. Um, and as for non-math, I, I play the piano. I like to compose. Oh, great. That's great. Okay, and Zhao. Um, hi, I'm Zhao. And uh, there is construction nearby. Sorry, <laughs> um, I am completing my undergrad at Haverford College and uh, my main mathematical interests are in algebraic combinatorics, especially some connections with representation theory or algebraic geometry. And for a non-math thing, um, I really like reading and I've started playing bad badminton recently, so oh. I've been interested in that. 
That's great. The Badminton Club plays, I think, Friday nights every week in the IMA, which is our Intramurals Activities Center. Actually, I should put a slide on that because in case you are interested in sports, we have a huge varsity sports program. Of course, we're Division I, so you know, if you want to go watch football, or I love the volleyball team, we're really good at softball, there's a bunch of sports. But for the regular athletes, not the varsity sports, there's a whole separate center, which I consider the Taj Mahal of recreation, absolutely huge, with a basically a whole gym dedicated to badminton, another gym dedicated to volleyball, three gyms for basketball, many, many different weight rooms you can lift in, a huge pool, all kinds of stuff for you. All right, now, did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody on the call, is that right? Okay. Well, great, then any last minute burning questions, you can just unmute yourself and ask, or ask each other questions, whatever, whatever floats your boat there. Alice is giving all kinds of tips about things I didn't know about, about birding here. <laughs> I think you hit on a chord. Alice, do you want to tell us about the Urban Horticulture Center? Yeah, so uh, not too far from here, uh, just beyond the baseball fields, kind of over by Laurelhurst, there's an Urban Horticultural Center. And behind that, there's a great birding area. If you walk out, there's a marsh and you can spend a long time, you know, several hours out there and see a lot of really cool stuff. And then if you want to drive, you can go to Discovery Park, but we have lots of great birding, not very far from where we are. Yeah. Hey, I want to do one thing, if you don't mind. Could I take your picture? I'm going to take a screenshot here to add to our um, resource page. So if everybody could smile for one second, hold your smile. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Well, it, we're coming towards the end of the hour, and I really appreciate that you made the time to come and chat with us and introduce yourselves, and I hope that we've given you the beginning of uh, the information that you need to collect. I know that you have a lot to think about, and this is not always an easy decision, but I want I, our top hope is that you find what's right for you. So, you know, that, that's where we want you to be, in the comfortable school, in the comfortable place where you can do your best work. And um, we really do hope that that is the University of Washington, but if it's not, we fully understand. And I, for one, am always curious where people end up. So please email me either way, say, yes, I'm coming, or no, I'm not coming, and where I'm going. And that's, that's I'm gonna root you on wherever you end up. Okay, well, thanks again. I'll hang on the call in case there's other one-on-one -on -one questions or anything that anybody wants to say, but why don't we hang up and, I, we're all busy. Take care and hope to see you soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, I had one more question. Yeah. Uh, how dog friendly is Seattle? That's a, <laughs> actually a more complex question than you might think. Mm. Um, people are very kind as a culture in Seattle. But uh, there are newspaper articles about the Seattle Freeze, which is like, it's kind of hard to find a friend sometimes who was born and raised in Seattle. They are just slightly less likely to invite you over to dinner. Wait, did you say friendly or dog friendly? I thought- Dog I thought friendly. Said, oh, I'm sorry. I thought friendly. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that was Hold on, different answer. answer. The dogs here are so cold to one another. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a dog where- all my friends have dogs. We the dog friendly culture is big. Yeah, okay. actually, Stefan, you have a dog too, right? Yeah. I, I, there's actually interesting statistics. I think it's one of the few metropolitan areas with more dogs than kids. <laughs> so I think it's very dog friendly. A lot of the students have dogs too. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I I have two dogs, so uh, just making sure. They fit right in. Yeah. Uh, it's actually funny. Uh, come here. Watch. Why don't you come? Yeah, we want to meet the dog. Hey, even if you don't come, send your dog. <laughs> oh, it's a big dog. Oh, okay. So if you have big dog, yeah. you might She's want to look. Too. Yeah, exactly. You're made for this place. I know. Yeah, that's you what might I want to look for housing near Magnuson Park because they have an absolutely that's beautiful off-leash off dog area. That's where we were looking. So yeah. And then... Oh, okay, good. They're both, 
Yeah, I don't take my little dog there anymore because <laughs> she's kind of too small to play. But this one, these two, these guys can play with the big boys. Really good. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to check that other thing. All right, thank you. I think Absolutely. that's everything.